how to fry up the crispiest, juiciest, most flavorful pork chop ever. Welcome back, our good friend and the author of The Farmhouse Chef, Jamie DeMent. Welcome Hi. back, Jamie. You look so beautiful. Thank I love this you. Dress. Thank you. Pretty in pink today. You're so yes. beautiful, as you can see. Joining Allie at the counter are yes. Larissa <laughs> and Maria. You guys dig in. Hi, okay, ladies. I was not exaggerating. This is not an oversell, and Jamie's going to tell us why. Now, mm -hmm. this, the reason that this pork chop is so juicy and flavorful is yes. because it's not your average pork no, chop. No, it, it is not your average pork chop. You can see, like, as you look at it, this is not the other white meat. It is pretty and pink also. This is a, your average grocery store pork chop. This is what you can get at any grocery, stop locally, grocery store locally. Ours is fresh from our farm. I flew it from North Carolina all the way across the country. It was an adventure. Um, <laughs> it was a true adventure. It was fantastic. Um, but you can see, so this is um, mangalitsa pork, okay. which is like it's like the Kobe beef of pork. It's a heritage breed of pork, um, which means it's a it's a breed that's been raised for a really long time. They live outside. They have a forage-based diet, and this is a, a very special pig. They're originally from um, from Hungary, but they're 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 raised all over the world now. Um, they're really similar to Hamon Abirico, to the, the the famous Spanish pig that everyone loves. That, is, that gave yes. me chills. It's so it's delicious. So, it's so People good. People that don't even like pork eat that and go, "This is oh the best yeah." Thing well, I've ever it's eaten. amazing. It's I mean, it really is. A, it's like it's like pork and butter and chestnuts Girl, it's had a love butter. child. Pork, it's like really? it's like <laughs> magic. Delicious. It's so good. And you um, really don't have to do too much to no, it to make it super taste simple, beautiful super because simple. of the diet of these yes. pigs. All right. So so far, you've just put some salt and pepper. Yeah, there's salt and pepper on this and we're gonna we're gonna dredge it just really really quickly this is um, milk and eggs okay so just you know you're, you're just getting it wet we're bringing it over here into flour and salt and pepper but you can do this is gluten-free flour because okay. um, I am I'm leading one of those gluten-free I'm that person at dinner now who's like oh <laughs> you have the gluten-free toast become, I have <laughs> become that person um, so we're just dredging it in the flour, but you can use regular flour, gluten-free flour, or even cornmeal if you're feeling it. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, okay. so we, we've got hot canola oil in this skillet, and you want it to be good and hot. Okay. Because um, you want a nice crust. So we're dropping it in. Okay. And, and while it, you do that, I'm going to let you go over there and wash your hands. Yes, that over is here a brilliant like, idea. And I will I'll man the stove for a minute. Mm-hmm. Here we go. So it's kind of like making chicken fried pork. Yes. Am I, am, am I close? You're you're very very close. And okay. in the South, honestly, like this is a, a fried pork chop is is a regular thing. And this mm -hmm. recipe is kind of our family's modern twist on it. Okay. So we're gonna put pesto on it. Oh, interesting. Um, instead of so so you know like my grandmother would have taken this fried pork chop, taken the pan drippings and turned it into gravy, mm -hmm. and then would have smothered this thing in gravy and maybe maybe had a heart attack later in the day, <laughs> but it would have been really good going down. Um, but that sounds real. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. So we're just gonna you're gonna fry it for about five minutes on each side, flipping it, <laughs> checking in on it, um, and it you know it's just so incredibly delicious and simple. Now, if we were to do the same pork from your North Carolina yes. farm. If you did it in the oven, would it be as flavorful? Could you do something like um, that? You can bake it. I mean, you can do just about anything with this pork because there's so much fat in it, it's really hard to screw it up. Okay. So when, when you have good fat content in your meat, it's going to help keep it moist always. Okay. So you can put it under the broiler oh. for, you know, five minutes on each side and get a similar effect without frying it. Okay. And you and I, we do that. If I'm, if I'm in a time crunch or I don't want anything quite as carby, I broil it and smear the pesto on and do the same thing. Nice. Wow. Okay, yes. so we have our finished pork yes, chop our finished over pork here. Cup is here. And you could just serve it like that or you could serve it like that. gravy, but yes. you have made the arugula pesto. Yes, so this is a seasonal twist on pesto. Pesto doesn't always have to be basil and pine nuts. So this is arugula and pecans. Yes, oh. I said pecan because I can. I'm from North Carolina, <laughs> and that is how I roll. No pecans here. Oh. Um, so you can you can play with, you know, different kinds of nuts also. Pine nuts, pecans, walnuts, even peanuts. Um, so have fun with it. So this is uh, arugula pesto, and I'm just putting it on here right at the end while it's still oh, wow. in the pan, because you want it to get warm and melt a little. Okay. Mm. Yes. And this pesto could work on anything. It's really oh, delicious. Oh, yeah, it can, I mean. dip bread in yes, that. Yes, dip bread. Yeah. You can drink it. Uh, pizza topping, <laughs> whatever. It's so good. Okay. Um, so yeah, so it's, this guy, Magic of Television, is is ready to go. You just, okay, let's You just him. let the, um, is that off? There we go. 
for the sake of time, you'd leave it for a minute, but we're all right. We could serve yeah. it now. And while you guys played and uh, dig into that, I have to ask you, I understand that you have a very special milestone coming up that you are celebrating yes. in a big way. I am turning 40 years old. Oh, congratulations. So I am right in the middle, uh, I, and my husband is probably blanching as I say this, 40 days of 40. Oh. I am literally celebrating for 40 days. I started uh, in our beautiful North Carolina coast, right at the beach. Friends and family came together. We had a big party. We ate a lot. We may have toasted with some bourbon and oh. red wine. Where'd you go? Beaufort. Beaufort. Oh, Beaufort. Yes, yeah, that's yes. my so, part of the world, too. Yeah, so pretty. Um, and then we went to see the Indigo Girls. Oh. Um, <laughs> again, Richard may have blanched a little at that. I think he was the, the only man in the audience. He's here. Um, yeah, he's Sorry, here. Richard. He's laughing. Um, <laughs> And uh, we're here in L.A. visiting friends and family. And then next week, I am leaving for a month in Italy. Oh. We are basically, like, hitting the whole country. We're starting wow. in Rome and oh Florence goodness. and the Ligurian coast and then Milan and Bergamo and Venice. And then we're going to end on the Amalfi Coast. That's so, the best so we're, 40th wow. birthday I've yes. ever heard of I think it is. Life. That's my goal. I'm Do you need it. any friends to come along? Y'all can come. Y'all can come. I'm taking, I'm taking lots of luggage so everybody can get <laughs> so a bag. Yes, party. it'll be Don't perfect. Happy yes. Birthday. Day. Thank you so much. You know how to party. I yes, like that. that is one thing. Celebrate I'll well. my 40th. I'm calling you. Yeah. To help me plan. That is oh. amazing. Isn't that so good? Oh my goodness, it's the best pork chop I've ever eaten in my life. Really. Th that's what I'm all about. It's amazing. Thank you so much. And for the full recipe, visit HallmarkChannel.com, and you can connect with Jamie on her website. Yes. <laughs>